comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael Snyder, everybody. Michael Snyder, hello. Culture Blaster is what he calls himself. I'll tell you that uh, kind of... Before you say anything, Mike, I just want to remind people that you write for the Marina Times. He can be seen around town, knocking around the city on uh, Polk Street, uh, on uh, near the Royal Grounds, and then knocking around the city south of Market. He likes to hang out. The new Twitter building probably will have a new uh, a number of vacancies. Michael, maybe you want to set up shop there. I recollect uh, a little trip uh, down uh, on foot past Market Street's uh, Twitter building and a homeless encampment out in front. So yes, maybe, uh, yes. How about that? Right. There was a lot of musk in the air at the time. Oh, wait. Oh, I sorry. see what you did. I see what you did. Hey, hey, come on. Come on. Hey, come I want to wish everybody a happy Halloween weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm going to spend my afternoon uh, eating delicious empanadas uh, at the Royal Ground and then prepare myself for this evening's booty mashup at oh, the Oasis. Oh, yes. It's yeah. Big, big, big mashup party at the Oasis tonight. Uh, booty is uh, going to address Halloween with the usual flair and fervor. Uh, so uh, props to Adriana and the rest of the gang. Uh, you know, uh, for, uh, but just for people who have never been to a booty matchup uh, mashup and, and there's one at the Oasis, as he says, uh, it's worth a ride. It's pretty good. Um, it and then next week, can I tell the story about uh, joining you at a booty mashup? Um, it was so much fun. But then getting into the uh, conversation with the uh, was it a transvestite? I, I, no, no, I no. Drag, what, drag, drag queen drag, performers. Okay, drag queen. I didn't know the, I'm sorry. I don't know the, please, ahead of time, I want to apologize because I know that the terminology changes. So a drag queen performer, I got into a, um, a misunderstanding with the drag queen performer, maybe the best way to put it. So you I'll want to apologize story. to the drag queen? I want to apologize to the drag queen community, and uh, yeah. I want to apologize to the... And uh, I wanted to apologize to the Asian Asian, and Asian, Asian drag community. queens. I want to apologize to them everywhere. Anyway, go ahead, but, Michael. You know, I'll tell the story next week. Okay. Well, you know, it, it, it is Halloween weekend, and so uh, scary news that Jerry Lee Lewis died, uh, but considering the ups and downs in his life and his avowed embrace of that old-time religion, I have a feeling that Jerry is somewhere very hot Dodging great balls of fire. <laughs> I see what you did with the great balls of fire. Oh, don't get my balls on that. You got you to gotta do what you got to right. do. Um, right. what, what you wanna, let's, let's talk about movies. What do you say? Thank you. Please. Uh, okie dokie. Um, we'll kick it off with uh, Call Jane. Call Jane is based on the experiences of real people who struggled for women's reproductive rights, specifically inexpensive access to abortion in the 1960s at great personal cost and who eventually helped bring about change. Today, we have reactionary forces trying to rewrite that chapter in history, kind of, uh, and that makes Call Jane an activist drama. It's the account of Joy, a suburban Chicago wife and mother with a life-threatening pregnancy. So Joy who is married to a successful lawyer, cannot get approved from the local hospital board to terminate her pregnancy. So desperate, she gets involved with a secret collective trying to provide safe haven to women in need of abortions and finds herself becoming involved with the group and then committed to their cause. And this is, again, based on a real group of people. Uh, I think they call themselves the Janes or the Jane Coalition or right. uh, forgive me for not knowing the specifics. But um, Elizabeth Banks plays Joy, the housewife who gets radicalized. Sigourney Weaver plays the leader of the collective. And uh, Wunmi uh, Mosaku, who was in Loki, really great in the Loki miniseries, plays a black member of the collective who's lobbying to make abortions available for those who can't afford what a well-off woman can pay for the service. So initially the service is taking in money for their, uh, you know, secret abortionist who insists on, you know, a certain fee and not everyone can meet the fee. So it's a little bit about um, the class disparity as well. Uh, OK, um, I got to say, well directed by Phyllis Nagy, uh, Call Jane has an agenda, but this is an agenda that's becoming increasingly relevant these days. And the movie isn't preachy to the point of being heavy handed. The cast is able, the story beats are engaging, and the intent is noble. Call Jane is currently in theaters. So you you think it, it's pretty good? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good, solid film. It is okay. built around uh, you know a desire to uh, bring people's attention to a problem that is... Sure, you know, that is now it, it's a contemporary problem now. 
It, it is indeed. Um, uh, staying in the realm of dramatized reality, The Good Nurse is a mix of hospital drama and police procedural based on a strange and unnerving true story. Uh, there was a stunning number of patient deaths in the New Jersey, Pennsylvania area during the late 1990s and early 2000s. But regardless of whether they were accidental or serial killings, they were apparently covered up by the lawsuit fearing hospital administrators. And uh, the good nurse addresses this real uh, uh, event and uh, circumstance. So two exceptional lead actors, uh, Jessica Chastain and Eddie Redmayne. Uh, genre fans will know him from, uh, you know, the Harry Potter prequel movies. Um, anyway, they bring their skills to the good nurse and may not cure its issues because there are some story issues, but they provide value to the project. Chastain plays a nurse and single mom with a heart condition who's befriended by a recent hospital hire. A uh, helpful, seemingly compassionate male nurse played by Redmayne. Chastain and Redmayne. Yeah, it sounds like an ambulance chasing legal firm, doesn't it? Get in Chastain, touch with and, Redmayne? Chastain yeah. and Redmayne. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they elevate um, a low key by the numbers script uh, that sanitizes a lot of the dark doings that are recounted in the film. Ultimately, their fine tuned performances put the good in the good nurse which, for the record, was directed by Tobias Lindholm. Uh, it's also available on Netflix. So, you know, if you have an account, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's, you know, these are terrific actors, and the story is pretty shocking. Uh, so it, it's really a cover-up? You're saying there was a cover-up involved with this hospital? Is that is that it? Did I get that? Uh, well, not just with this hospital. Uh, these patient deaths would occur and then the hospital administrators would just let the guy who they think was possibly responsible go. I see. I see. And he would move on to another hospital. Well, it's very uh, uh, Vatican City, very Catholic <laughs> Church. <laughs> in its way, in its way. Hey, right. there's no cure. There's no cure for religious fervor, though, is there? Yeah. How would you handle this? How would you handle this? <laughs> we could, we try. could try ignoring it, sir. And that's that's exactly it. So uh, that that sounds like an interesting film, and you liked it. Okay, that's called The Good I, yeah, Nurse. I, I like both, of, both of these movies are interesting in, in different ways. They're not great films. There are script issues in both cases, but mm -hmm. uh, they're carried by their stories uh, and cer certainly by the casts. More and, low uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next to the – go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the, the good nurse. The good nurse is is kind of low key considering yeah. the topic, uh, which maybe uh, shows an even handedness instead of an exploitive uh, nature. But uh, a way more emotionally potent movie uh, is After Sun. A F T E R S U N. After Sun, uh, a poignant and resonant drama about a rare vacation getaway for Callum. Uh, and his 11-year-old daughter, Sophie. This relationship is clearly a loving one, uh, but adversely affected by dad's strained rapport with the girl's mother. So they don't really get a chance to get off on their own that much. Thus, this is a big deal. The story is told from the standpoint of the adult version of Sophie, the daughter, as a collection of memories. And the result is very subtle, but very affecting. It, it feels like it's something that's been taken from the life and genuine memories of uh, the movie's up and coming director and screenwriter, Charlotte Wells. We watch parent and child on one of those mid-level package tours to a slightly tacky tropical resort. I, I actually, I think at some point it seemed like they referenced that it was Turkey. But uh, in any event, as the father tries to cope with the various grown-up issues that are dogging him while on the vacation, the daughter's oncoming pubescence begins to stir her hormones. So Paul Mescal, who was pretty great in the recent Irish small town drama God's Creatures, is equally terrific as Callum, but it's Frankie Corio as Sophie, who is a real find. She's one of those young actors that you just know are going to make big waves. I was very impressed with After Sun. It, again, it, it's a very atmospheric um, not a lot happens, you know, if you're expecting, uh, you know, Vin Diesel to show up on a motorcycle and start slaughtering people. That doesn't happen in After Sun, but it's a very good movie uh, in theaters this weekend. Wow. OK, so that's in theaters. What else do you have for us, Michael Snyder? Uh, stop motion animation master Henry Selleck, the guy who did the freaky and already classic movies The Nightmare Before Christmas, James and the Giant Peach, and Coraline, has teamed up with Jordan Peele, 
for a pretty wonderful, slightly creepy, and definitely morbid romp into the world of Hellspawn demons. And 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 here's more Hellspawn, vicious real estate developers in the prison industrial <laughs> complex. This thing has a little bit of topicality about it, too. Anyway, now, is this stop motion or is this live action? It's stop motion. This is a okay, stop sorry. motion animation film. Uh, okay, and it's, it's like you, you've seen The Nightmare Before Christmas. Am I right? Of course, yeah. Okay, so it's the guy that did that. Okay. So imagine how that looked, and now imagine there were, you know, Michael, evil my humans. audience knows what stop motion is. You don't have to explain it in terms of another movie, all right? I mean, yeah, come Austin, on. Why are you I'm worried about, right. what, what, hey, I'm not worried about the audience. I'm worried about you. <laughs> anyway, uh, on the down, yeah, okay. On the downside, <laughs> on the downside of this movie, it gets kind of scattershot because it's trying to nail various targets and generate some sentiment for its central character, who is a badass 13 year old orphan girl named Cat Elliot, who lost her parents in a car accident that she feels was her fault. And for some unexplained reason, she now has powers connected to the underworld. Uh, Kat is enrolled uh, in a rundown school for girls with a real kind of St. Trinian's vibe. And there she deals with a trio of meanish girls and befriends a brave trans character who becomes her companion on her crazy journey. O on the upside, the movie reunites the ever hilarious comedy team of Jordan Peele and Keegan Michael Key, who play the titular demons Wendell and Wild. Titular okay, is a dang so word. Yeah, go ahead. I should hope so. So uh, we're talking about a movie called Wendell and Wild. Uh, these nasty scheming brothers are able to sneak out of hell uh, to cause havoc on Earth because of their poorly uh, explained connection to Cat. It never really made clear. But uh, another asset here is the voice work by the seemingly immortal James Hong, who you may remember from Blade Runner, Big Trouble in Little China, um, the Seinfeld episode about the Chinese restaurant and, and so on. Um, he's like 93 he, years old. He's still amazing. Like vital. He's still banging it out. He was in. Uh, he did voice work in Turning Red, the recent Pixar Disney movie. Uh, here he's the corrupt priest in charge of the girls' school. Look, this looks super cool, and it careens forward, uh, and it has its funny moments. Look, if not up to Selleck's best, Wendell and Wild still has many virtues, especially when it vilifies the greedy and the venal. Anyway, mm. Wendell and Wild like. Uh, the movie uh, The Good Nurse is on Netflix as of today. So Netflix wow. has been kind of a little mini bonanza, man. Yeah, it says it turns out. That's pretty cool. Um, At least for, what's, for the weekend. What's my situation? Do I have another minute or two with uh, Michael Snyder, fabulous producer John Daly? Fabulous yeah. producer We're John Daly. We're still standing by, yes. Go ahead. Okay, okay, quickly. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about All Quiet on the Western Front. It's directed by German filmmaker Edward Berger. It's the latest version of the classic World War One novel, brutal and disheartening. Uh, it's a look at the grisly cost of war and the toll it takes in young lives. Uh, if you can handle the nightmarish experience of being on the battlefront and in the trenches of a convention war you must watch this uh, it follows the travails of a young fear fraught german soldier as the truth of his circumstances start to hit home masterful movie making with bold and kind of dizzyingly effective cinematography and it makes a case for the sheer pointlessness of nation fighting nation exceptional searing tragic it should be mandatory viewing for heads of state you know uh, although that'll never happen since politicians seem to be so removed from the perils and the challenges faced by their constituents when the bullets aren't flying and the bombs aren't exploding it's in german with subtitles and it's on netflix as of today a uh, wow. netflix triple feature courtesy of your friend michael snyder yeah that's right remember michael snyder in your uh, in your will because of these yeah, uh, great recommendations well, were you uh, did you did you look at all uh, the the um Ticket to Paradise, is that the George Clooney film? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember you and Courtney were interested in Ticket to Paradise. Well, and I, I just yeah, more me it. than her, but yeah, you're right. I, I thought it looked it looks uh, looks fun, nice, feel good, yeah, yeah, none of those yeah, things. Yeah, George yeah. Clooney and Julia Roberts, come on, tell me something Mark, good about that it. Doesn't, that doesn't cast you in a very favorable light as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, Ticket to Paradise. How dare are you? you? I, you know who I am. I'm really, kind of I, Michael is really coming after me today. Mark, I'm not happy about it. Mark, I watch, I watch this thing for you, and are you okay. ready? It's okay. a feeble, puerile, predictable, laugh-free rom-com about, <laughs> about David and Georgia. What? 
a bickering yeah. long divorce Quar- couple. Quarrel or querile, however you want to say it, is definitely a ding word. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Is, uh, David and Georgia are a uh, bickering long divorce couple of uh, well preserved, well healed olds whose daughter Lily has decided to not pursue a career in law, but instead marry a handsome seaweed farmer she met on a post grad holiday. I to love Bali. it so far. What could possibly go wrong? All right, Invited- continue. Invited to the wedding, the exes, uh, who have great disdain for one another since their daughter was a toddler, must endure a tandem trip to beautiful Bali in hopes of talking Lily out of making the same this sort of This is mistake. a great premise with well, well cast. Can you let him finish, sir? Okay, I'll let him finish. Go ahead. They, yeah. they, they, you know, they, they made a mistake when they married young, they think, so they don't want her to do it. Mom, of course, is played by you-know-who, Julia Roberts. Dad is played by... George Clooney, the star power aplenty, but all their charm and charisma and comic verve cannot make this retread plot and a weak oh. script work. If you look, Mark, if you wonder if the battling exes reunite by the last scene and you want them to get back together, <laughs> you are the target audience for this claptrap, is all I'm saying. Oh, my God. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, he really, really doesn't like Ticket to Paradise with uh, George and Julia and all of them. He really does like Michael Snyder does. All quiet on the Western Front. He says it's a brutal watch, but it's an important watch maybe if you, um, uh, well, I mean, if you can sit through the World War II uh, recreation yep. as brutal as it was. And, World, uh, World War One, Mark. World, World War, War One. I. Oh, is that what it is? World War One. Okay. Wait, by the way, was there another All Quiet on the Western Front film made or not? Yeah, this is ba- both of these things are based on a, a famous uh, worldwide Book. bestseller. Yeah, no, I, I know it's a book, but I thought there was also another film. Yeah, they, yeah they, this on. is not the first time they've made uh, a, okay. a movie of the book. Wendell and Wild is the stop motion virtuosos offering that he did with uh, uh, with uh, Keenan. Which one? With, uh, uh, with Jordan, 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 he Jordan and Jordan, Peele. He and Jordan Peele, wrote, uh, Henry Selick and Jordan Peele wrote the script, and Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele reunite as the right. demons uh, Wendell and Wild. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, Wendell and Wild. And that's in theaters? No, that's on Netflix, baby. Oh, Netflix. Okay, mm. Netflix there. After Sun, which is the, is it Paul Mescal and uh, Frankie Corio? Uh, yes. I really like that. That's also on Netflix? In theaters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, we're going to get to a Netflix movie. Keep going. Okay, okay. The Good Nurse, based on oh. a true story with Eddie Redmayne and Jessica Chastain. That is, he really liked that. And, no, uh, I, no, I liked it with reservations, but the performances are <laughs> exceptional. Okay. He liked it with reservations, but the performances are exceptional is what I wanted to say. Okay. Uh, that That's on Netflix? That's on Netflix. It's a Netflix okay. triple feature. That was the third of the three. Okay. And then uh, Call Jane, which is the story of... Uh, uh, the true story of this uh, secret collective to get abortions. Uh, it's based on the real stories. I say Elizabeth Banks, uh, Wunmi Musaku, and uh, Sigourney Weaver all in it. Apparently a really uh, a compelling uh, film. And uh, you like that. Is that right? I did, I, again, I liked it. It, it had some uh, obvious Some issues moments. with script. and Yeah, yeah but, uh, but it's still, it's a worthwhile film. And that's Netflix or that's theaters? That's in theaters. <laughs> Everything's on Netflix eventually, so don't worry, people. <laughs> uh, Michael Snyder can be read in the Marina Times. He can be seen here and heard here on Fridays. Uh, Niners are in trouble, Michael. I don't know what to say. They have got to pull out of this tailspin, and the Rams might be the way to do it. They're going to go to Levi's South, as we like to refer to SoFi <laughs> Stadium. There'll be a lot of so, Niners fans there for sure, yeah. Uh, let bring that sea of red. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game, and uh, we'll see. Christian McCaffrey knows the entire playbook now, and we are going to see if he is indeed the weapon I think he is. Mm. He comes and goes. What a rainbow. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, indeed. He's uh, known as a culture blaster across all social media.